Listen, I cannot stress this enough. One of the most important rules in politics, if you are running for any office, is to never attack voters. Your surrogates can attack voters. Your supporters can attack other candidate supporters. But the minute you as a candidate decide to attack the people who you may need to vote for you, that's when you are just so desperate that your campaign is uh, irredeemable. Now, this week, we saw both Mike Bloomberg and Joe Biden attack Bernie Sanders supporters. They're vicious. Joe Biden said that Bernie Sanders uh, should speak out and that he would disown them if those were his supporters. Mike Bloomberg, a serial sexual harasser, uh, decided to call out the harassment of Bernie bros, ironically. And now we have Elizabeth Warren, who, you know, rather than pushing back, who supposedly one of the leaders in the progressive movement decided to join in on this course of attacks. And she also decided to herself attack Bernie Sanders supporters when NBC News reporter Ali Vitali asked her about the culinary union's claim that, you know, Sanders supporters were harassing them. And um, she decided to attack Bernie supporters all while preaching unity. You see, you be divisive and attack people and then claim, I'm for unity. Incredible. But nonetheless... Take it away, Liz. When Culinary 226 did come out and criticize Bernie Sanders for Medicare uh -huh. for All, his supporters really attacked them. Do you feel, and you, you're someone who's actually come under that attack before, back in Iowa, back in January, do you feel like he's done enough to condemn the culture online that stems from his movement? I've said before that we are all responsible for what our supporters do. And I think Bernie has a lot of questions to answer here. And I am particularly worried about what happened to the attacks on members of the Culinary Union, uh, particularly on the women in leadership. The whole notion of publishing their personal addresses, their phone numbers, and then making very aggressive threats against their own safety and the safety of their families. That is not how we build an inclusive Democratic Party, and it is not how we build Donald Trump. We do not build on a foundation of hate. We do not build on a foundation of hate. So she is literally implying there that Bernie Sanders, this entire movement, centers on hatred. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I'm not going to deny that, you know, hatred is a factor. It is a factor, certainly. People hate the system. They hate the establishment that is oppressing them, that is bankrupting them, that is literally killing them. So, I mean, sure, hatred is there, but people are channeling that hatred. They're channeling their anger into a political movement that the Democratic Party claimed it wanted. You've got it now. You've got a rainbow coalition. You've got enthusiastic young people finally excited about a Democrat. And apparently now we're all hateful. And she implied that, you know, the culinary union, they were mostly like the women of the culinary union were targeted by Bernie Sanders supporters. So she's implying that Bernie Sanders supporters are sexist, as Hillary Clinton did in 2016. Now, my question to Liz is, are these sexist Bernie bros the same ones who in 2014 begged you to run for president? Is that the same people who you believe are uh, now hateful and sexist? Just curious, trying to find out who we're talking about here. Now, when it comes to this claim that Bernie Sanders supporters attacked the culinary union and uh, they were doxxed and harassed, I genuinely don't know what they're talking about. Like, I am a very online person. I'm on Twitter. I'm tweeting every five seconds. And... I don't know what they're talking about. Like, I didn't even see the attack that the culinary union released about Medicare for All. I would have probably pushed back if I saw it. But, like, I don't know what they're talking about. And if that happened, of course, that's horrible. We don't condone harassment or doxing. But, I mean, you can't possibly say, as she did, we are all responsible for what our supporters do. And I think Bernie has a lot of questions to answer for here. Because that's impossible. How can you say with a straight face that... You are responsible for the actions of all of your supporters. That makes no sense. If that's the case, if Elizabeth Warren truly believed that, then I expect her to promptly condemn her own supporters who have been harassing Bernie supporter Allison Metzger, who writes, I continue to be hounded by Liz lads for answers that I have already given and documented ad nauseum with no substantive counter bullshit infinity. I'm also receiving DMs asking me if I am planning on a coffin or cremation when I die of cancer. Now, she's saying this because she basically put out a tweet 
that said, if Bernie, if Elizabeth Warren supporters are the reason why we don't get Medicare for all, I will never forgive them. And then after that, she was bombarded with hatred from Elizabeth Warren supporters because a prominent Elizabeth Warren supporter decided to quote tweet it and basically put her on blast when this is just a private citizen. Is Elizabeth Warren going to condemn that? Basically, her own supporters excited about the fact that she has cancer? That's pretty toxic if you ask me. What about this? Glenn Greenwald writes, Here's what one Warren supporter, not some random tweeter, but a blue check journalist with multiple MSNBC appearances and a prominent blog wrote about me this month. Has Elizabeth Warren demanded that this stop? I hope so. This kind of toxicity has no place in our discourse or unity. And this person said, Fuck Glenn Greenwald. I hope he dies in prison. And as you all know, Glenn Greenwald has been the target of a fascist government in Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro. And he's a journalist. Is Elizabeth Warren going to condemn this? Is she going to condemn all of her supporters who've been harassing Native American women? And as you can see from these screenshots here that this user posted, Warren supporters have been the worst when it comes to online attacks. And they're saying that they've received the most attacks from Warren stands. You also have a prominent Warren surrogate, not a supporter, but a paid surrogate, Ashley Preston, have a history of racism and homophobia exposed. And Elizabeth Warren didn't come out to condemn the person that she hired. I've said before that we are all responsible for what our supporters do. Why hasn't Elizabeth Warren condemned all of this yet? Maybe she doesn't actually believe that you are responsible for the actions of your supporters. Maybe she's just saying this because she's desperate and this is a pathetic attempt to get people to move away from Bernie Sanders and rally behind her. Well, guess what? That's not happening. That is not happening. You got trounced in Iowa and New Hampshire and 538 is projecting that on Super Tuesday, the only state where you're going to win any delegates will likely be Massachusetts, which is your home state. So for someone to claim that they're the unity candidate when we're not unifying behind you, we're all coalescing around Bernie Sanders. I mean, how can you claim that you're the unity candidate with a straight face when the left is rallying behind someone else and when you're being divisive, you're attacking Bernie Sanders and not just the candidate, but his supporters. And you're the unity candidate? Sure, Jan. You see, the thing about Elizabeth Warren is that she just refuses to listen. She likes to talk at people because she's smart. She's the wonky technocratic millionaire and she expects you to listen. But we're telling her, we don't want to unify behind you. We want Bernie Sanders. We tried unifying behind you in 2014, but you told us no. You were too afraid to stand up to the Clinton machine. Bernie stepped up and now we're with him. So we are telling you very clearly, it's reflected in the polls and in voting, that we don't want you, we want Bernie Sanders. So why aren't you listening? Like, the same is true with Medicare for All, because, like, I was surprised that she stood her ground for so long, but the minute she started to lose her frontrunner status was when she moved away from Medicare for All, because clearly she wasn't listening to voters. I mean, think about this. The way that she pitched her... Uh, Medicare for all proposal and her rollout plan was that, look, we need two separate rollouts. We have to first roll out a public option and then we have to roll out Medicare for all in my third year as president when I'll probably lose the House or the Senate as historically most presidents do. That was her goal. Now, the reason why we had to push for, you know, not one, but two major legislative battles. I mean, Obamacare in and of itself. We fought for that for what, more than a year? And it was still huge. We barely got it passed. It was voted along party lines. But the reason why we have to fight for one legislative battle and then move on to fight for another legislative battle is because after we get people a public option and we put Medicare for all into their hands, then they'll want to keep it. Well, this is just another example of Elizabeth Warren talking at people and not actually listening to voters because you don't have to put it in their hands. We have the shitty healthcare system in our hands already. And we're telling you, we don't we don't want this. We want Medicare for all. Look at the exit polls for Iowa and New Hampshire. All Democrats support Medicare for all overwhelmingly, not just Democrats. Look at public opinion polls. Most Americans, a majority now support Medicare for all. But yet she's telling us, no, I need you to have a public option. So that way you'll want Medicare for all more. And then it will be easier for us to get it. No, you're not listening. We're telling you we want it now. That's what we want. So we don't believe your strategy here. And this tells us that she doesn't even understand what this battle will be about. This isn't about you convincing us to give us Medicare for all. You've already won us over in that regard. We want Medicare for all. This will be a battle between the health insurance industry 
and whoever becomes president, if they choose to pursue Medicare for all, I promise you that after having a public option for two years, they're not going to be any more persuaded to just die and go away so Medicare for all can come to pass. Like, that's absolutely delusional thinking. But it just goes to show you that Elizabeth Warren, she has a plan for everything. She doesn't care what you want. It's what she wants and what she says. So she never listens to voters. And here she is now condemning all of us as sexist Bernie bros who are harassing and doxing members of the culinary union. But yet... Her supporters are innocent little angels. I mean, this is the problem with Elizabeth Warren. And as she claims that Bernie Sanders supporters are toxic, well, back in, what was it, August, October, when Bernie Sanders had his heart attack, when she was riding high in the polls, when she was in first place, you had some Elizabeth Warren supporters call on Bernie Sanders to drop out and unify behind her because she had the momentum. And now that she has zero momentum, now that she has no real path towards the nomination, she's calling us toxic and she's basically saying, you know what, in spite of Bernie Sanders having all the momentum, leave him and unify behind me, even though my campaign is going to crash and burn at any minute now. I mean, listen, Elizabeth Warren has to ask herself this. Is she serious about getting progressive policies passed? I think that her actions will tell us how she really feels, right? Because if you truly were serious about uniting the left and getting progressive policies codified into law, at a minimum, you would at least stop attacking Bernie Sanders and his supporters over and over and over again. And if she truly believed it, she'd drop out. Now, it's her right to stay in as long as she wants. I can disagree with it, but that's her right. But if she truly believed in progressive policies and she wasn't just self-interested, she would at least practice the unity that she preaches but the fact that we can't even get that the fact that she has become a main opponent to bernie sanders i mean i i just don't understand what she's doing if i'm elizabeth warren currently i'm seeing the writing on the wall i'm realizing that my campaign should probably start winding down i'm pulling ads from nevada already as she did and i'm trying to carve a path for myself for the future i'm uniting with bernie to take down biden and bloomberg so maybe i could be his running mate i'm uniting with bernie sanders so maybe i can get a job in his administration but instead she's just trying to go out of her way to not just attack bernie sanders but turn off his supporters by attacking them directly like you can condemn attacks on the culinary union that's fine but don't generalize, don't claim that that's representative of all of Bernie Sanders supporters if we even want to claim that they were attacked. Because again, I have not seen these attacks. We're just going off of what the Culinary Union claims. So I mean, Elizabeth Warren, keep preaching unity while you refuse to shake Bernie Sanders' hand on a national stage when everyone is watching. Keep preaching unity as you condemn people who you would need if you want to run in 2024, 2028. I mean, keep doing it because we're seeing who you are. This is mask off. We're seeing the real Elizabeth Warren. I thought that, you know, you just weren't as good as Bernie Sanders because you lack political courage and you have horrible political instincts and because you surround yourself around people who are just terrible, who are democratic strategists, who are just lunatics, who hate Bernie Sanders and progressives. But really, we're seeing the true Elizabeth Warren here. She was never serious about any of this. She talked a big, big game. She, you know, had a pretty good record up until now. But when push comes to shove, when the left really needs her, she's not there for us. This isn't the first time that she has shown us that. So this is the real Elizabeth Warren. Remember this when she expects us to help her or support her down the line. Because now that she's not here for us for a second time, a second election in a row, she can guarantee, she can count on us not being there for her.